Hey everybody, this is the first round of my playthrough of the Pathfinder adventure card game, Rise of the Rune Lords. I'm playing through the Burnt Offerings adventure, and this is the first scenario, Attack on Sandpoint. So thematically, just kind of going from from the, the source material, I think it makes most sense. I don't know if it's strategically the, the best thing to do, um, but I think it would make the most sense for the characters to start out at the Swallowtail Festival, because that's that's in the story. That's that's why everyone's in town in in Sandpoint for the Swallowtail Festival. So might as well start there. That just kind of makes sense thematically. I think I'm going to start with Valeros because he's my tank, and I feel like if that was if we were rolling initiative, he'd probably have a better initiative than Sioni. So I'll, I'll let him go first. So on his turn, he can move to a location. He's done that. No, actually, first, he needs to in increment uh, the timer the timer deck. So that's that's 30 cards. We've just used up one. Uh, when this deck becomes depleted, the game is over. So he moves to a location. Uh, he can give a card from his hand, which I haven't dealt him yet, to see, to any character at that location. Um, no other character is at that location, so we'll pass on that particular action. But he does need a hand, and his hand size is detailed on his character card, and that is a hand size of four. So I need to deal him out four cards from his draw deck. Let's see what we got. We got a long sword, that'll be good for combat. We got a matic, that could be good for evading barriers. Uh, or getting past barriers. Blessings, those are good for a couple of things, and an ally. Okay, it's not a bad, not a bad, I, I wouldn't have minded having some armor, but you can't have everything. So that's his hand. Whether or not we'll need any of that, we'll see. So he's at this location. Let's read a little bit about this location. Sandpoint's town square is crowded with people. Locals and visitors alike celebrate amid good music and food. But tiny forms slip through the shadows and begin singing an obnoxious song. Now it says, at this location, at the start of your turn, you may shuffle any number of cards from your hand into your deck and draw one fewer card than you shuffled in. So that's a nice little option to have. It's a rule that I'll try to remember. I don't imagine I'm going to take advantage take advantage of it necessarily. He's got such a small hand anyway. I don't know if I would want to, I would have to shuffle in two and then just draw one out. And he's got everything he needs, I feel like. So probably not something I'm going to do, but maybe for Sioni I will, who knows. Oh, and I should mention, I guess, that because his favored card is a weapon, his initial hand must contain a weapon, which by chance it does. If it didn't, I would have discarded, not discarded, I would have recharged this hand and drawn a new hand. But he got a weapon, so he's, he's good to go. Okay, so the next stage of his turn is to explore. That's an optional stage. He doesn't have to explore if he doesn't want to, but that's kind of the name of the game, so we'll have him do that. I guess I'll put that up there. Uh, so to explore, you just take up, you take off the, the top card of the location deck where, where that character is and look at what you got. So this is a toad. That's an ally card. So this is either going to get put back into the box or it's going to be put into Valeros' hand. And in order to get it into his hand, he needs to make a check, either a wisdom, a survival, intelligence, or arcane check. None of those are necessarily his specialties, although some of them aren't bad. Wisdom is not great at all for him. That's a D4. But his intelligence isn't bad. It's a D6. And we can also kind of look through his, his cards here to see if anything would help him. It doesn't look like it's going to help him. This says recharge this card to add a 1D10 to your perception. That doesn't really work. Sword, well, we don't want to go to battle with the ally. This blessing, uh, we could discard it to add a die to the check 
So instead of rolling a d6, he would roll two d6s. Or a matic, would, which helps him with a strength check. None of those really speak out to me as something that makes sense to spend on acquiring a toad. I mean, this is, it's a nice ally, although frankly it's, it's, it would be better for Sione than him. Sione, if she had this card, she could bury it to put a spell from her, to rescue a spell from her discard pile back into her hand. So that's super potentially powerful if she ends up having to discard a spell at any point. But I don't know if it's worth spending a card on. Uh, Valeros obviously cannot get a 7 on a d6. That's not possible. So there's really no way to get this card. I mean, I could roll a d6, but I guarantee you it's not going to come up a 7. That's just kind of a dis... That, that goes away. That's gone. Which is too bad. That's a little bit of a waste, but I don't want to waste more cards on on potentially not getting that one. Now, because there's that timer deck, I do frequently feel pressure to possibly take advantage of one of the blessing features, which is usually you can discard this card to explore your location. There are probably about 40 cards between all of the different location decks, and there are only 30 cards in that deck, or 29 now. So there's it's not possible to get through all of the cards in all of the locations with the cards allotted to you, with the timer. So it is sometimes beneficial to get rid of a card to get another chance to explore. And the blessings, you can't recharge them. They're discard only. So I feel like I think it's probably worth it in this case to just discard that. I mean, that's it's scary to do that because that's essentially Valeros's health. As we discard down out of his draw deck, if we run out of cards to draw, then Valeros is dead. So it's very scary to do that. But as I say, the timer is just as potentially, um, just as dangerous. If we run out of timer cards, the game's over. So, so he's going to explore again. And it's a blessing card. That's not bad, I guess. I mean, it's definitely not bad. So he can roll his a divine check or a dexterity check to get this blessing. Well, he doesn't have divine, but he does have a dexterity. It's d d8, I think. Dexterity, yeah, d8. So he could roll a d8 to try to acquire this spell into his deck, which would make up for the blessing that we just spent. He rolled a 3. That's too bad. It's not equal to or greater than a four. So unfortunately, he does not acquire this blessing. And that just goes back into the box. It's gone. Not a great turn. Not 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 a great way to start off, to be honest. So he's got three cards in his hand now. He needs to, at the end of his turn, draw back up to four. So he's got another blessing, which I can't play now. This is the end of his turn. Um, so I've got a blessing, Matic, Longsword, and an ally. So that's good. That's Valeros's turn. So it's now Sione's turn. So the first thing I'll do is flip over a timer card and then move Sione to a location. There's no advantage, I don't think, to splitting the party right now, especially since Valeros has that special ability where he can add a d4 to a player character's combat check as long as they're in the same location. So I think in this case, at and at this stage of the game, there's an advantage to sticking together. So she's just going to go and join him at the Swallowtail Festival. I'm going to draw six cards for her. Her hand size is six. And her favored card is a spell. So she must have drawn a spell in order for this card to be valid. Oh dear. She shouldn't have two arcane armors. That's a mistake on my part. I guess I must have missed the arcane armor before. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oof. That's a lot of that's a lot of blessings and no attack spells. Which is kind of a dangerous place to be right now. Because if she encounters a monster, she's gonna have to attack. 
and I mean it's great to have some protection, but yeah, this isn't this isn't a great hand, really. Not really. But it's got a spell in it, so it's a valid hand. So I can't can't do anything about it. I'm gonna really quick look to make sure that she has that force missile card, because I'm afraid that I might have gotten rid of it. No, she does. It's in there. Okay, cool. Just making sure that I built her deck correctly. So anyway, she's got six cards. They're not great cards, but she's here. And she can now explore. And that's the name of the game. So we're going to explore it. Of course, she gets she gets a combat card. So this is a goblin dog. It's not actually a goblin. Uh, its traits are animal and basic. So if she manages to defeat this thing, she does not have to potentially take fire damage, uh, which is a global rule for this scenario. If you defeat a monster with the goblin trait, roll a d6. This does not have the goblin trait, so we don't have to roll the d6. It just happens to be named Goblin Dog. She has to go to combat with this thing. She doesn't have a choice. And the combat check is a 9. As I've said, she does not have a combat card right now. But you might recall that she has that special ability to discard a card for combat. Discard a card to roll her arcane die, which is a d12, plus a d6. And her arcane skill gives her a plus two. So that's pretty great. It just means that she's going to have to discard something. And as much as I hate to discard really anything, um, this potion, if she were to use it, requires her to banish it, which means putting it back in the box and never seeing it again. It kind of feels silly... I mean, in other words, this is going to get used up anyway. I don't foresee a whole lot of fortitude checks being required. Maybe if there's a barrier or something, she'll need a fortitude check, but I'm not going to keep this in my hand on the off chance that she'll come across something like a bottle of poison or something. So I'm just going to discard this in order to give her a fighting chance against the goblin dog. So her fighting chance is actually pretty darn good. So she's got a d12 for her arcane, plus 2. She's got a d6 because she discarded that card. And then Valeros is in the same location as she is, so he can just for free throw in an extra d4. So she's trying to get a 9 on all of these. Actually, she's trying to get a 7 on all of these because we get a free 2 uh, from her from her arcane bonus. So she's already got two, so we just need to get seven more. That's a four. That's a seven, so she's already one, and she hasn't even rolled her arcane die yet, and that's a two. So she gets a nine, ten, eleven, so she beat the goblin dog. It says, if undefeated. Well, that's not true, so it doesn't matter, so he goes back into the box. She doesn't get anything for that victory. She just doesn't have to take damage, and that's reward enough, honestly. Um, so she does have a bunch of blessings. And once again, I'm always nervous about that timer deck because that's always counting down. So I think I'm going to be a little bit brazen here and just arbitrarily discard a blessing card. Easy come, easy go, hopefully. Well, definitely easy go, but hopefully easy come. So she gets to explore again because she discarded that. Oh, that's unfortunate, possibly. But then again, maybe not. So this is a henchman. This isn't just any old monster. This is a henchman. Meaning that if she goes into battle with it and she succeeds, then she'll be able to close off this location. Which is significant because that means essentially that we don't have to keep looking through this deck. That's what, two, four, six cards? So that kind of reduces, I mean, that, that kind of sort of gives us a bonus to our timer deck now, because that's six turns, essentially, that we don't have to worry about. Why don't we have to worry about it? Well, because we know that the henchman was here. We haven't encountered the villain yet, so we know the villain 
is in one of those three decks because the villain and the henchman can't be can't both be at the same location at least not at this stage in the game so she needs to defeat this thing it's only an eight she just defeated a goblin dog that was a nine so i'm actually feeling pretty good about her chances the problem is that she needs to discard a card in order to get the her her attack so i'm going to do exactly that and discard a blessing I mean, she's really discarding a lot. I'm I'm aware of that. That's three cards now that she's discarded. So essentially, she's taken three damage in in a in a sort of roundabout way. But for her arcane die and a d6 and a free plus two bonus for her arcane bonus, it's well worth it. And of course, Valeros is still at the same location, so he can invoke his power to give her a free d4. And so we're going to roll. I don't know what that would be. Um, it's a cracked die. It's a five. I think I'll just roll that again because that feels weird. Okay, that's a ten, and then a three. Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. So, um, so her six and that d four is a nine alone. So even with or without her, her arcane die plus her bonus, she absolutely slaughters the goblin raider. So that's easy. That's gone. Now, when you defeat a henchman, you are able to immediately attempt to close the location. Closing a location means that the villain cannot run to that location, which will be important if we encounter the villain and he gets away from us. But in order to close it, she must defeat or acquire the next card in the deck. If there isn't one, then we close it automatically. Well, there is one. So she gets to explore again, I guess, is the bonus, the positive side. The thing is, though, that she has to acquire this thing in order to close the location, or else we just have to keep chipping away at this deck. So this is a super, super important card, and we don't know what it is. Hopefully it'll be something that's sort of vaguely in her wheelhouse. Of course, it's a barrier. <laughs> Um, and it's probably a fortitude check because I... No, okay, it's not. So it's a dex check. Dexterity uh, check 8. Or a strength melee 16. Well, Sioni's strength melee die is a, D, is a D4. So there's no way she's going to get a 16 on that. Her dex, I believe, is the same as Valero's. A d8. Yeah. So she can go up against this barrier with a d8, and she'd have to roll exactly, I mean, she'd have to roll as high as it possibly could. But luckily, she's got maybe some things that might be able to help her. Um, there's a blessing. She can discard it to add one die to a check. I hate to discard yet another card from her from her deck, but this is a super important card that is going to save us so much from, you know, but we're not going to have to look through the rest of the deck. So I feel like it's actually worth discarding. And I'm just really hoping that she's going to explore later and find a bunch of of helpful things. So 2d8 is what she's going to roll, and she's hoping to get an 8. She got an eight. Didn't even have to discard the, uh, the the blessing after all. But hey, I'll take a victory. So she got past the locked passage, and she successfully closes that location. So we don't have to worry about this location anymore. We can. We're allowed to. Uh, you can you can continue to explore and try to acquire cards, but I'm not going to do that anytime soon. Anyway. Not until I'm feeling a lot better about our timer deck. So we've successfully closed a location. Uh, that's a huge milestone. There are now only three locations left. I guess um, thematically, the Swallowtail Festival kind of was happening in the town square, so we could go to the town square next. Or we could rush over to the cathedral and try to save it because it's uh, 
actively burning down uh, by way of goblin pyromancy. So one of those two is probably our next stop, but I'll save that for the next time. Quickly draw her back up to six cards. Ooh, that's good. She's got a force missile spell now, so that's that's going to enable her to um, make attacks without discarding a card. So this is huge for her. It's probably going to save her, really, from having to discard many more cards. So that's that's huge. Yeah, we're, we're in a pretty good place. The one thing that makes me a little bit nervous is that Valeros doesn't have any armor still. No, I mean, not in his hand anyway. So that makes me a little bit nervous. But I feel really good because we've just eliminated like five cards out of a location deck that we can now not worry about ticking over our timer deck for. So yeah, I, I feel like we're in a pretty good place. Cautiously optimistic. And uh, we'll see what happens next time. Thanks for watching.